Howdy ho, YouTube Major Chord here. Uh, if you've been in the quote-unquote tactical community long enough, you've kind of become accustomed to the concept of bug-out bags, bail-out bags, shit-hit-the-fan packs, all of that type of stuff. Um, and for the past several years, I've been toying with my own version of that concept. And it's kind of, it, it's, it's finally reached a point where I feel comfortable sharing my general uh, idea of it here with my subscriber. But this pack here that you see is not a shit at the fan pack. It's not designed for the zombie apocalypse. It's not designed, you know, for WROL, as nothing fancy would say. It's not designed, um, you know, even for the most part as a 72 hour pack. Um, you know, if I were to you have a very horrible disaster happen, it's not designed you know, to help me survive in the wilderness for 72 hours. Um, there is a 72-hour capability, but I'll get to that. This pack is designed specifically to combat Western New York's atrocious winters. Um, and very specifically, from the relative comfort of my car. Um, several years ago now, uh, there was an instance where the New York State Thruway had to be closed because of horrid weather conditions, you know, bl blowing snow, freezing temperatures, that sort of stuff. And it stranded thousands and thousands of motorists on the highway, um, you know, for several days. They were unable to move, snowplows couldn't get to them, and basically they were snowed into their cars for, I think, two or three days on the thruway. So that's where uh, the whole idea for this kit kind of came from. Like, what am I going to do if I happen to get stuck somewhere in my car in our usual disgusting winter weather? Or now that I drive a Chevy Camaro, which is a car that's totally unsuited for our winters, what am I going to do if I happen to go off the road somewhere? Or, you know, that type of stuff. This is not at all designed for, you know, what if I get lost? Or what if I have to ditch my car? It is a mobile system, it's just a backpack, so theoretically I can take it with me and go, but it really doesn't have any extended survival capabilities. I don't have any water filtration in here. Um, one thing I am currently lacking, actually, is water. There is no water in this kit. Um, my logic currently being is that if I'm stuck in a snowstorm, I need to open my windows and gather snow. It's snow. It'll be pretty safe to drink. Um... But I could add water, but we'll get to that later. Um, the whole concept for this kit, and this first segment is basically an introduction here, is that if I'm snowed in or I'm off the road somewhere, this will get me by as best as I can until I'm able to move again from my car. Um, this is a, you know, I'm in my car, now what do I do type of kit. So... You know, or even if I have an accident, because there's first aid capability in here too. And since I'm often with other people, uh, more so when I had a bigger car, but this kit also has a limited capability to tend to at least one other person. Um, so with that in mind, let's kind of delve into this kit a bit and, um, you know, see where that takes us. All right, now for a brief overview of the pack itself. Um, this is a, just a pretty generic Camelback backpack. Um, I don't know the specific model. I've had it for probably six or seven years. Uh, I used it as a backpack when I was in high school. And it held up uh, to my abuse of throwing 20 or 30 pounds of books and stuff in it. So I figured it can probably take the abuse of sitting in my car and hopefully never being used. Um, all the gear that I keep inside it is segmented into their own individually organized and meticulously labeled Ziploc bags, um, not only for waterproofness, but just because I like to be organized like this. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm usually pretty organized about how I keep stuff, but in this case, I want to be meticulous about it because not only in a stressful situation, um, you know, in the event of me going off the road or me being stuck in several feet of snow in a 20-year-old Camaro, I want to know where things are. I don't want to have to think, like, okay, what section of this bag or what Ziploc did I stuff, you know, item X into. <clears throat> if someone else is rifling through this bag, either to help me or, you know, if I have a friend in the car and I say, go back into the bag and get this, 
I don't want them to have to do that. I want them to be able to look at that bag and say, okay, this is, you know, this medical kit has these 10 things in it. So that's why everything is separately portioned and meticulously labeled. Um, I'm not that anal retentive. It's, there's a method to this madness. So I'm just going to kind of take everything out so you guys can see what is where, and then I'm going to break off and go through each individual thing um, as it goes. So in this front portion, as you can see, I just have a set of mechanics gloves. Um, these aren't new as far as I know. My family just keeps a bag of gloves, or bag of gloves, a box of gloves and hats. Um, and I was going through them and found these. So I don't know how old these are, but they are in fairly good condition. And I threw them in there just in case I needed to protect my hands from environmental hazards or do other light duty work that didn't necessitate um, any thermal protection because mechanics, mechanics gloves, excuse me, are not going to do that for you. They're not going to give you uh, much protection against the cold. But if you need to protect yourself from uh, splinters, metal shards, anything like that, they're going to do that. So I did put those in there because they offer great dexterity. Um, back here, I just keep a couple Walmart bags folded up. Uh, these have no holes in them, so I could use them to gather some snow, melt it for water, um, and not melt it by fire or anything. I'm just saying literally keeping it in a decently warm car will melt it eventually, and I'll have relatively clean, clear drinking water. So this is my kind of ghetto way of surviving for a couple days, because right now I don't keep water in the pack, um, purely because it'll expand and burst potentially. Um, what I should actually do is just get a couple bottles and keep them in the trunk of my car, and I'm probably going to do that a little bit down the road. But this pack right now just doesn't have the carrying capacity, other than these two little pockets on the side there, to store water. So that's kind of my backup to my potential backup of how to take care of that. Um, in addition, I also have two glow sticks there. I just found these at the dollar store. Um, useful for signaling or, you know, I can hang it from my rearview mirror, provide some light for the interior of the car if I don't want to waste my batteries and my flashlight or the vehicle itself. So, always good to have that. And now, as you can see, individually proportioned and labeled bags. This is my lighting bag. Um, not going to go too much into this here because I will go into these later. Tool bag as the bag probably falls off there. Yup. Tool bag. And down here, this is a um, Swedish M71 stove, and I'm apologizing right now that I'm probably holding everything, you know, off camera in a place where you just simply can't see it because I'm kind of at an awkward filming angle. But just a Swedish M71 uh, camp stove, complete with the burner pan stand there. Um, this I keep in the un unlikely event that I need to cook something. And I say that because even though there is food in here, it's food that is not going to need to be cooked. Um, because I'm not planning on a hot meal from the inside of my car, um, you know, while I'm stranded on the side of the road. That's just not something I'm preparing for. So this, if anything, will provide some really uh, backup heat if everything else fails, I have no gas left in my car, or, heaven forbid, I have to ditch my vehicle. So, that's there. And I'm pretty sure that's all for that pouch, yeah. So, got that. Um, I also have just a couple AA batteries or AAA, something like that, stuck in these little pen pockets. I'm not going to dig them out. In the zip that up, center of the pack here, as you can see, it is full to the brim. Um, I have one pack of basically uh, spare clothes. This is the spare, spare set of clothes. Um, basically, it's a set of women's gloves, so they're not going to fit my hands. Um, a spare set of, uh, like, a headband, ear warmer type of thing. Spare hat. A spare scarf. Um, and this is the set that I would theoretically wear. So, larger set of gloves for me. Spare toque. Um, 
spare scarf, and deep down in there, spare pair of socks. So, you know, just in case I need to change my socks or I need extra protection on top of what I'm already going to have on me. Because I know for a fact I'm already going to have all of these things. It's buffalo, it's winter. You have to be really stupid to leave the house without gloves, some sort of hat, you know. Generally, I have a scarf because I wear a scarf anyway. Um, that type of stuff. But this will provide that extra level of warmth should I need it. Um, and now, all the extra fun stuff that you guys probably love. Um, this is kind of like my miscellany kit. Um, I have toiletries, I have fire starting capability in here, so this, when I delve into that, you'll see all of that. Here, this goes along with the medical kit. As you can see, it is just one 10 by 30 inch uh, trauma dressing that has been uh, vacuum sealed to take it out of its original container, um, just so it takes up less space, and two 8x10 surgery pads. And as you can see here, I labeled them non-sterile, or hopefully, hopefully you can see that, non-sterile because they are now um, not sterile. They've been taken out of their taken out of their original packages. However, um, I did this in a clean environment. I didn't touch them, um, you know, with dirty hands. And though they're not sterile for use in an operating room, they're fine for any, like, field trauma stuff I might need to do. Uh, my med kit, I'll go into that much later. Crap ton of... I'll figure those out later. Crap ton of uh, Ziploc bags, as you can see, they're falling everywhere. And two bricks of uh, Daytrex emergency ration bars. So this is like my food for theoretically one person 72 hours per brick. Um, if I'm going to have two people, which I often do in my car, I mean, I, I cart friends around quite frequently, um, then I thought it would be a good idea to have two. So that is uh, all the stuff that is inside of this pack currently. Um, now I'm going to break off and give each of these separate little packs its own review. 